Are you ready for the next great trilogy? Be more than human. And welcome back to the channel, all my fellow more than humans. My name is Joseph Carroll. I write under the pen name J.R. Carroll. And today I have a brand new release for you. Before we jump into that, make sure you like and subscribe and comment if this book was on your reading list for the year as it was on my one of my most anticipated lists of the year. And that book is The Sword Defiant by Gareth Hanrahan. Now, this book, let's just get this out here right now. I know we're only like a third of the way through the year, but this is at the top of the list for book cover of the year. The thing is the thing is beautiful. Now, this is a classic fantasy uh, book. Now, uh, Gareth is a um, best-selling author of um, the, I think his, his first book is the uh, Gutter of Prayers, uh, the Black Iron uh, series, I believe. Don't quote me on that one. But I believe that series is more of a steampunky vibe, um, where this is a more traditional uh, fantasy um, kind of hero's quest uh, type thing. But there's just a few things that are a little bit different that make this uh, this story really interesting. I burned through this book. Um, it just came out today, which I'll be getting the video out a day after. So um, yeah, very interesting uh, book. Um, we start off, the main character is Alfric, but in the book, um, like right, <laughs> right after he tells you what his actual name is, he basically, from there on out, he goes by Alf. Um, so basically just shortens his name down. Um, but right at the beginning of, of the book, it, it tells you about a battle that happened um, 20 years in the past. This group of nine amazing warriors uh, defeated this dark lord and his name was Lord of Bone um, and when they defeated them they took his capital city his uh, uh, is called Necrid right um, very like like necromancer right and the city um, is is like really dark and uh, laden with magic and monsters and Alf took, once he killed him, he took his magical sword known as Spellbreaker. And that, um, that sword um, is one of the main characters because this sword it has a personality, it talks, it has a mind of its own. Um, and it, oh, it always goes back and forth with Alf throughout this book. Um, it has this, you know, it's very bloodthirsty. You know, it tries to, like, hey, let's go out and let, let, let me kill these people. You need to be using me more. Um, that's one of the things that makes this very unique is this dynamic between uh, Alf and the sword, the sword defiant, right? It's a very defi it's a defiant sword. Um, so that is one of the highlights of this book. But um, back back to the city, what they did, they I and it's, I find this weird, and I'm gonna uh, and actually let me tell you guys, I am actually going to be interviewing Gareth this coming Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. And one of the things I do want to ask him about, um, and if you get a chance to read into this book, or if you just want to ask a uh, you know a tread pub author about certain things, uh, 
you know, come hang out with us. But um, in the book, they split the city up. So they actually took over his dark city and they lived like people, they moved into it. And they kind of split the city up into different districts and people are allowed to go places and people aren't allowed to go places. Um, that's a very interesting concept of like why you would want to live in this dark, this dark city. Um, but th um, there are like these, you know, monsters that live underneath the city that come that try to come out uh, from time to time. Um, like I said, I'm going to try to keep this as much non-spoiler as possible. Just kind of give you a feel of what is going on in this, uh, this book. Um, there are several other main characters and the, the, they're always held up as this group of nine. This group of nine that defeated, uh, Lord, uh, the Dark Lord, Dar Lord Bone, right? Um, and Elf... Um, he never, uh, he never like let it go that like, oh, there's always darkness here. I got to keep fighting. So he would fight those monsters that would try to come up. Um, but everybody else kind of used their fame and fortune and went off and became kings and queens and high mages and all this fantastical stuff. And Alf is you know, he believes that, you know, he got this vision that this darkness was coming back. And he does not sure what this darkness is, but it's like, we need to get the band back together. But it is very hard to convince, you know, people who once were warriors 20 years ago to take up their arms again when they're waking up in satin sheets, you know, it's like, uh, you know, uh, you know, you're really gonna have to do some convincing to get me out out of this uh, this kingdom ship that I have, or uh, you know, or being a queen. And it is, uh, it's excellent. It's very, and, it, and it's a high fantasy. It's its own world that he's completely created, and he does a great job of world building. And his prose are v really good. If you like those archaic pros and you like for people to really stay inside of them um he is excellent and i think he has a background as a role-playing writer like he writes the games like actual manuals and games and video games uh and stuff like that so he's very good at staying in those um in those pros those archaic pros throughout the whole way um and but it was very they were very easy to follow uh, you know, never felt like I got overwhelmed by him or, you know, didn't uh, have any jumbled up words. But, um, yeah, so the pros are on point. His world building is, is, is great. Um, and some a lot of the lore is very, um, very traditional. Um, elf, dwarf, like very traditional. Um, kind of harken back to um, uh, Tolkien, I, I would say. I know he's. I know from a little bit of what I know about him is that is a big influence on him. So if you kind of like that more traditional characters, um, this is right here for you. The darkness of the book um, is not too not too bad. Um, I, I mean, most people would probably put this in dark fantasy. Um, <laughs> and the sword is certainly bloodthirsty, um, but I never felt like it, we got to grimdark. No, no, not it's not on Joe Abercrombie level or anything, or anything like that. The action is solid, but it doesn't. Um, you know, in, in you know, you look at the cover and you look at the name of the book and and, and the synapse of the book, and you would think it's going to be just laden with. Um, you know, with action and just be nothing but an action book. Uh, but that's just not the case. He very, very strategically places the action throughout this book. Um, but you you have some really cool characters uh, like Blaze, who is a mage. Um, you know, Gundam, which is a, is a funny, funny character. He's a dwarf uh, um, late in. And these elves are, um, you know, your very traditional, super old 
you know, sty- like like the Witcher type of whole, you know, full elves. Um, very, very cool stuff. Um, but another thing I really like about this book is there is a price. There is a price that gets paid for using dark magic. A lot of times these books, you'll see them, they'll like, oh, we'll just, uh, you know, oh, we'll use this dark amulet or this dark sword and you know they they use it it works and that's it well not here like you can use it and it'll work but there is a price that always gets paid and i really like that so um like i said i'm gonna we're gonna kind of uh leave it at that uh i don't want to uh, you know, give you any spoilers since how the book just came out and I assume not a lot of people have finished it yet. But this is a terrific book. If you want to, if you like the, um, the, the questing, the getting a team, building a team together, um, traditional fantasy style um, with a lot of comedy and a talking sword. Um, I liken I liken the sword to Evil Bob. If you know if you ever got to that point in Dresden yet, very Evil Bob vibes. But um, I can't wait. Uh, come join us on Sunday when I get to speak with the author and ask him all about how he built builds his worlds. And remember, be more than human.